Hello and welcome to a brand new series that I am calling Psychotech. This is a series where I hope to dive into a variety of different topics that explore how we as humans interact with our technology and sometimes um, how that technology interacts with us. So this will be covering a, a very broad series of topics that I would just like to share my thoughts on and continue a great discussion that we have going on in our community. Some of this information will be brought about from discussions that I've had uh, with you, the users in the comments, and some of this will be just kind of uh, personal opinion pieces. And I will you know, do my best to kind of keep it interesting and engaging, but rather than being behind the camera, I thought that we might use a medium like this that would allow me to uh, discuss concepts visually and that don't involve horrendous pen and paper art skills. So the topic that I'd like to explore today is one that I get very often from family, friends, even people that I have casual conversations with, and that is the buy now or wait argument. So let's dive into what exactly is happening when we enter this kind of state of mind. So this is a fairly common question, and from my experience, it normally comes toward the end of the purchase decision. You kind of like the idea of the product that you have in front of you, and you're, you're, in, you're on that fence where, yeah, I could buy it, or I could not. I can wait for the next one because the next one might be better, it might do this, it might do that, uh, I might be able to do this, or I might be able to get the old one at a cheaper price. There's a lot of factors that are going to play into this that are going to cause some hesitation. Now that hesitation is positive, uh, but it also could be potentially negative. Uh, now this hesitation can also come about if you're looking at different specifications and, and different tiered models, there's a lot to unpack there, but we're going to keep this discussion pretty general for now. Uh, we might revisit it with more specific products, but this is kind of a technology product uh, in general. So this could be a laptop, this could be a smartphone. I'll leave the imagination up to you, but I think the points that we're about to go through are pretty universal. So let's litmus test our decision to purchase with a series of general questions. The first that I'd like you to consider is, are you happy with the product the way that it is today? And are you going to be happy with the way that the product is years from now? You need to understand that no matter how long that you wait to purchase something, there will always be something better coming on the horizon. So if you are not satisfied with the job that this product is going to do today, then you never will be. If you are satisfied with the product and its features and its performance today, then you're probably ready to purchase. If not, you either need to wait or to find a different product from a different company that'll help you solve that particular challenge that you have. The next thing that you need to consider are there confirmed features of the quote unquote next version of a product that you might be looking for. And there's a fundamental difference between features that are suspect and features that are confirmed. Rumors are one thing, but confirmation is another. The other thing that you need to consider is that the grass will not always be greener. Sometimes with newer product releases, features are taken away. So even though there are features that you might like in the next version that is coming, you need to wait and see if they deliver on that without removing any of the functionality that you like about the current product. If there are no features in the next version of the product that are a huge attractor to you, then you're probably ready to purchase. If there's nothing that they're doing in the new version that you really need, then you might even be able to save a couple of dollars when the prices drop because that new version is coming out. So there's consumer savings to be had there. Another thing you need to consider is, is waiting on this decision going to harm your workflow? Now, I use workflow in the general sense. That could be recreational, it could be business, it could be personal use. Uh, but let me give you an example. When I had to replace my LG G4 phone, that thing could not stay turned on. If I were to wait for the next phone that I wanted to purchase, I would be severely 
harming my personal workflow because I would not be able to use my phone reliably. And in that case, I was ready to purchase. I had to fix that problem. However, if you don't really need something, and you probably heard someone say this to you, it might be a spouse or a parent, well, you don't really need that right now. Don't dismiss that as them not wanting you to spend money, but think about it. Is this product really required for your recreational workflow, your business workflow, or your personal workflow? If the answer is no, and the only reason is you want the latest and shiniest thing, then you might want to reevaluate your purchase reasons. Just something that you want to consider. So let's take a look at some more specific questions that you can ask yourself to see if you are ready. So with regards to some specific questions, have you done in-depth research? Have you watched videos? Have you read blogs? Have you read consumer reports? Have you talked to family, friends, or even complete strangers on message boards or Reddit that, you know, have answered all of your questions? If so, then you're probably ready to purchase. If not, you probably need to do more reading. Okay. Now, this is another important one because there is so much content about a product when it's released, generally speaking, that you need to really ask yourself the question, is the person that I'm listening to using the product in the way that I am going to be using it? If the answer is yes, then you're probably ready to purchase because you've done research in your field or in your area or in your use case. However, if all of the content that you're watching has nothing to do with how you intend to use that product, then you might need to reevaluate, continue to do some research, or if you're able to, ask those uh, reviewers or content creators some questions that are more closely related to your use case. One that's often forgotten is, have you researched the customer support for that product? Are you aware of what is going to be covered under any warranty that is provided, uh, whether or not extended warranty is available for purchase. Uh, is it something that a lot of people are recommending to purchase? With certain laptops that really cannot be user serviced, an extended warranty is highly recommended just to save yourself the cost on repairs or replacement. If you haven't done that research, then you need to make sure that you know what trouble might uh, await you if something goes wrong. Taking the time to do it right. If you're making a significant purchase, to me, that should warrant a proportional amount of time being spent on doing the research and thinking about the problem and the solution that you're going to choose. If it's something that you really don't care about, like you're just buying a charger, then obviously that doesn't require a whole lot of information. Will it charge my device? Yes or no. Will it fit where I need it to? Yes or no. they are simple questions, but remember that technology is a tool and has to do its job. So you want to make sure that you've thought about it well in advance and you've tried to come up with as many uh, scenarios that you've previously experienced with your existing tools and whether or not your replacement or your new purchase is going to do as good or better. Remember that form is important. Design is important, but no amount of form or design will make up for something that does not function. Keep that in mind, especially when you're looking at more premium style devices. They might look beautiful, but can they actually do the job that they're meant to do? Lastly, know your return policies. Know where you're buying from. Can you return a product after a certain amount of time? What conditions? Because it, you shouldn't be afraid to be wrong about a purchase, but you need to know what options are available to you uh, if that decision turns out to be a wrong one. And you shouldn't be afraid to admit that you're wrong and to return something that doesn't work for you because there is something out there that will. And just because your first purchase didn't meet those goals does not mean that it is impossible. Thank you very much for watching this pilot episode of Psychotech. If you have any ideas, suggestions, or comments, feel free to let me know in the comments, Twitter, or Curious Cat. Any three of those would be much appreciated. This is a kind of a new uh, territory for me to be heading into, but I think that there is some genuinely good discussion and information worth sharing about some of these topics, and I hope that you will do uh, just that. Uh, share this video with friends, family, 
coworkers, uh, places that you like to frequent on the internet, and see what kind of discussion that we can generate uh, with regarding to these topics that we explore. And again, if you do have any of those ideas, let me know. I'd also encourage you to hit that subscribe button down below and maybe hit that notification bell so you know when new content is released. You'll be the first to know and you can fight about who says first in the comments and all that good stuff. And once again, thank you very much for showing your support and I will see you next time.